You know, I wanted to start uh, this press conference just talking uh, about an article that was written about our assistant coaches the other day. Um, and I want to say this, when you talk about contracts, um, the situation is uh, fluid. Um, and, you know, I know the men that are in this building. Uh, I know where their heart's at. Um, and I also know the circumstances around uh, decision making and where they're looking for as, as where they're going in the future. So all I can say is this is uh, the final chapter has not been written on that. Um, and they will continue to look and see and meet with our administration to see whatever they can do to help supplement uh, the university. Um, while I can't answer all your questions regarding this, uh, you know, I I'd like to focus on Auburn, um, you know, and looking at these guys as a team. Um, to me, it starts offensively with their quarterback, uh, Bo Nix, guy I'm very familiar with. And in fact, um, you know, his, his granddad and my dad used to coach together. So uh, I've, known his, I've known his family for a very long period of time. I think he's playing really, really good football. Um, they have two really good wide receivers or three that have lots of experience out there on the outside. Uh, they got a stable of running backs, play a couple of guys that tied in and, and they're big across the front. You know, uh, going against Coach Malzone uh, over the years, you know, they play with a lot of really up-tempo, um, different looks, spreads you all over the field. Uh, you really kind of got to keep your edges on the defense, um, try to eliminate explosive plays, make them drive the ball through you. Uh, defensively, uh, Kevin Steele uh, is a guy that I've worked with many years ago, a good friend of mine. Um, they play a lot of man-to-man, -man, uh, mix it up defensively, create negative plays. Uh, play fast, play hard, have been really opportunistic um, over, the, over the course of this year. Uh, and in special teams, I think it's probably one of the better special teams units that um, we have seen. Uh, very aggressive uh, on their punt block team, have blocked a couple of punts, um, have been explosive in the kickoff return game, got good specialists. Uh, so it'll be a tremendous challenge. You know, really this past week, our, our players were very disappointed about not getting a chance to play. Uh, but we, I thought we put uh, three really good consecutive practices together. Um, really good for our quarterbacks. I thought Harrison Bailey um, had a really good week along with uh, um, Maurer and, and, and JT. Uh, and it was, it was good to get Jimmy Callaway, uh, Jimmy Holiday, um, Malachi Weidman to get those guys extra reps there and just let them start just root, just um, understanding how to run the routes against certain coverages, you know. So if you're going to run a, a steep route, a, a 10 to 12 yard comeback, you know, if it's cover two, you obviously want to convert it. Uh, just the details of having to do it, uh, just to me, being able to have a chance for T and uh, Coach Chaney to really kind of put their hands on these guys and coach them up, I thought was really good from a from a throw game standpoint. It's a chance for us to get healthy. Um, and um, I feel like that our football team going into this week is probably as healthy as it's been in a while. So with that, I'll take any questions. I'll start with Rick Russo, then go to David Pascal. Hey, Jeremy, just curious, from a managerial and coaching standpoint, how difficult has the last couple of weeks been, especially with last week being postponed? Well, when we, when we came back, well, really to start, <coughs> excuse me, when we went home, uh, I think it was March the 12th was the date. Um, it's been, you know, everything changes daily, right? So there's lots of unknowns just really trying to adapt. Um, and there's nothing that you can go back and draw from, you know, so there's no history books on COVID. So it's all first times. Um, I think it's been very important for our staff. Um, you know, we've, we've really done a lot of quality control um, and, and documentation about how um, some of the things we did um, during March, April, May, June, uh, just so we can go back and look at it because we don't know this might be the norm for next year too. So it's not like this is going to go away anytime soon. Uh, but, you know, so it, it, it has changed, uh, but we've tried to adapt uh, and uh, provide the leadership for our players. Uh, 
you know, so we can get the most out of them. And I know for those guys, that's the one thing I'm, I'm frustrated for a lot of these guys uh, because their circumstances change uh, quite frequently. Uh, and it's something out of things that they have no control over. So, uh, but guys have a great attitude. Uh, they're working hard. Um, and, and so uh, they're excited to give a chance to play this week. Jeremy, after the Auburn-Georgia game in early October, Kirby said that was not a Gus Malzahn offense. That was a Chad Morris offense. I didn't know if you've seen uh, differences between what Chad's done compared to what Gus likes to do without giving away trade secrets. Well, to me, they're, they're uh, very I, – I coached against Chad when he was at Clemson. Uh, and so they kind of come from the same family of – of offensive football. Uh, so there, there is some familiarity there. Um, I, I, I probably see some of the things that Kirby probably was talking about, uh, maybe because so, we have lots of history, right? So I'm sitting there, Coach Ansley's showing tape yesterday to the players and I'm sitting there looking and I'm trying to figure out what year this video actually was, you know, and it's like 2013, you know, so, um, but we have lots of history, um, and I, I will say this: there, there's you can see that Chad has his uh, thumbprint on it, uh, maybe more so than than Gus. But there's still a lot of things and flavor that shows up that's that's you know it's still Gus Malzahn's offense. And I wanted to ask you about the game two years ago. Obviously, y'all had trouble running the football down there, but the way Jarrett played. And I think y'all converted like 10 third downs and it seems like a lot of them were third and long. Was that, I mean, given the magnitude and beating a top 25 team on the road, is that uh, as good of a performance as Jarrett's had? Well, um, he, he played really good that day. Uh, you're right, we couldn't run the ball. Uh, you know, we, we couldn't block them up front. They had a very good defensive front. And, uh, you know, we, I felt like our wide receivers made a lot of plays that day. Uh, our O-line held up in protection enough for us to get the ball out. Um, you know, it was very typical. Um, I think the score might have been 17 to zero. Uh, I might be wrong there, but um, kind of had a history there playing against Auburn that seems like if you can get through the first couple of drives, uh, they, they play so fast and just getting accustomed to playing them. You know, I was telling the, the defensive guys yesterday, if you look, the teams that kind of play Auburn every year have more familiarity uh, with how the offense is run and uh, teams that, that don't play them every year um, seem to struggle. So it's important to understand what Auburn tries to do philosophically on offense. Um, and, and we've really worked hard um, yesterday to kind of get that ingrained to our defensive players. Thank you. Teresa Walker, then David. Yeah, Coach, with uh, how the SEC has tried to add a, an extra day for makeup games at the end of the year, uh, how confident are you that you'll be able to get the full 10 games in this season after what we saw last week? And then this morning, the Ole Miss A&M game has now been postponed. Uh, or do you just take this uh, the rest of the season day by day and, and hope to finish at this point? Well, uh, obviously, we can't predict the future. Um, I believe we all knew when um, we started this, players, coaches, there was no guarantees. Uh, so, you know, it, I, that's why I've, I've, I've been really proud of our football team, um, the way they go to work, uh, the way they've stayed positive, um, and, you know, through, through the circumstances, right? So um, I think it says a lot about them as, as, as people and about their character. Um, and I know they're excited about the opportunity this Saturday. So uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to play. David. Uh, Jeremy, on the pay cuts, was there something that you was that something your assistants had brought to you to discuss or were those decisions kind of made independently um, on their own? Yeah, you know, David, I, I wasn't going to really talk about it, but, um, you know, with, with this whole thing, the communication and, um, you know, during the middle of the season, I did not specifically sit down with any assistant coach. Uh, I knew that they were being approached about it. I didn't know the outcome uh, until Blake wrote the article on um, Friday. So, uh, and, and, and what Blake wrote was factual, right? So, but I do believe, like I said before, 
uh, that that the final story has not been written there yet. Uh, so uh, it's a fluid situation and with contracts, things change. So there'll be opportunities, uh, you know, to make adjustments as we go, through, go as we move on. Thanks. Uh, Brent Hubbs and Mike Wilson. Coach, two things. One, you said your team was as healthy as you've been. I'm assuming that means Jared is back. And two, from a defensive standpoint, as you self-scout and look around the league, scoring is obviously up. Do you think that's because of uh, the lack of a normal preseason, or do you think this is a shift in philosophy in the SEC offensively? What, what do you think the differences are in this league for scoring? Probably a little bit of all what you said there, uh, Brent. It's just, um, you know, you um, there's lots of really, really good players playing this game right now. There's quarterbacks that are prepared coming out of high school um, that can get people to ball out there uh, in, in space. And, um, you know, if you if you're committed to, to getting the ball out on the perimeter and you've got good players out there, um, you know, lots of times you ain't got to block all the big guys up in front, right? So when you line up and run inside zone and you're going to run it uh, 10 times, I mean, you're talking about six guys. It's got to block six guys uh, exactly right with a, with a back hitting it up in there. Whereas if you get the ball out in space and you got playmakers, guys can create explosive plays just like that. So um, it's something that I feel like you got to be able to do both. Uh, you, you have to be able to run the ball consistent, consistently in this league, but you got to create explosive plays. There's nothing like getting yards in chunks. Um, and that's something that we've really been trying to focus on. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it, somebody did about the last time we played Auburn. Uh, I don't know how many explosive plays we had that day. We couldn't run the football, but we could create explosive plays. And that was the difference in the game. So, uh, Probably the, the, the two most important things when you talk about outcomes of games is number one, turnovers, and number two, explosive plays, whether you create them or you give them up. Uh, on Jared, you, you feel like he's going to be good to go for Saturday, or is that still day-to-day? -day? Well, he, he practiced yesterday, um, you know, but all the other guys took a lot of reps this, over the last uh, three practices. So, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, we'll see how the rest of the week goes here. Uh, but I, I was really excited about how these other guys continued to work. Uh, and I thought Jarrett had a good day yesterday. So, um, it, to me, it seems to be a little more confidence um, offensively, especially with our younger guys, uh, just having a, a, a better idea um, to how to execute at a higher level. Mike? Yeah, Jeremy, what is Sean Schamberger's status with your team right now? Sean is uh, – he is working on – academics um you know this has been a very unusual um really circumstance with this whole deal um you you try to do school from home um not being in person uh again when you talk about uh tutors and things like that so one of the things that he's focusing on he's going to focus on academics the rest of the semester so you don't expect him back with your team then this season no all right, we'll go to Austin Price and Blake Topmeyer. Coach, with the NCAA pushing the dead period for recruiting into the spring, how, how does that affect each staff, not just you guys, but around the league? And what, what kind of pressure does that put on for evaluations, for, you know, and then what kind of detriment do you think that is to the not just the 21 class, but now creeping into the 22 class? Well, you know, for us as coaches, you know, if whatever tape that you get, you just have to evaluate it. Uh, obviously, there wasn't any spring evals when you watch people in person. There wasn't any summer camps. Unfortunately, um, there's there's not a lot of football going on uh, throughout the country. It's not consistent everywhere. So the opportunities for guys um, to improve their game um, is not there uh, for everybody. Um, you know, I, the, the, the ones that I worry about are really the student athletes um, that are being recruited. The fact that they can't go on campuses, which I understand why they can't, but 
I can't imagine making a decision of where I'm gonna to go to school and I've never been to a campus. Uh, it's very unfortunate for them. I don't have the answer uh, for it, I wish I did. Uh, but we've, we as a staff have really worked hard to build relationships and do the best that we can uh, to take Knoxville and the University of Tennessee to wherever that may be uh, by, by Zooming online, um, videos, whatever means necessary. Jeremy, you opted to forego a raise this season. It's my understanding you were not asked to take a pay cut. With, with so many members of the athletic department taking a pay cut, including some within your program, uh, was foregoing a raise enough or, or should you have contributed a, a voluntary pay cut? Well, we're, we're in the process of um, where we're appealing the NCAA because everybody that's under uh, the football program, I don't know exactly how many numbers that had to take pay cuts. Uh, me and Casey, we chose to supplement um, their salaries. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to go through the NCAA because there's a loophole there uh, that we have, to, we have to get an appeal for us to be able to give them a one-time gift uh, so we don't break any NCAA rules. With your assistant coaches, um, with so many in the athletic department taking a pay cut this year, either voluntarily or, or not by their choice, do you think their decision reflects on, on their leadership, their decision up to this point to not take a pay cut? And, and if so, how? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm really with every conversation, each, each uh, individual um, had a conversation with our administration to go through this. I was not preview of any of that because it's personal. Uh, but talking to the guys on our staff, I'm not exactly sure that, um, you know, that that the, the outcome is exactly what they expected. I think that there's things that they wanted to do moving forward. We got guys that's got contracts coming up. Uh, we got guys that wanted to do things at the end of the year. So just for me, for an example, um, you know, I, I, I do my tithe in the last Sunday of the year every year. You know, so I write a check uh, to the church. And um, so there's there's all kind of circumstances around each individual person. And I'm not and I'm not really privy to every every situation. All right, Gustavo, then Matthew Ray. Coach, our challenge is to not play in Elon Stadium in the month of November, something has happened since 1891, having three consecutive road games. Is that challenging for you guys? I know what the COVID situation played out, but is that challenging for you guys? Gustavo, you come out of the gate so fast, I, I lost you there to start oh. with. You said something about 1891. What, what uh, it's the uh, This year is the first time since 1891 Tennessee is not going to have a game in Inland Stadium in the month of November. Is that challenging for you guys to actually have a three uh, consecutive road games? Well, I, I, I really didn't even know that. Uh, so that, that's that, since 1891. Yeah, I mean, obviously going on the road in this league uh, is a challenge. Uh, I, I don't think it's as challenging as it is when the stadiums are full. Um, you know, so, um, but I think having a, having a home game uh, the familiarity that not putting in the travel um, is definitely an advantage. Uh, you know, I think it's it's good for Knoxville. It's good for uh, you know our fans, uh, and and it's good for our team. So, and it's another thing. You know, when we travel, we have to miss school on Fridays. You know, uh, so having a chance to be able to finish and do all your academics on Fridays is important too. So, uh, we'll be glad when we get back. You said how many? How, the whole month of November, right, Gustavo? Yes, yes. Uh, Texas name was the only game was scheduled for the month of November. It was postponed, so no games for Tennessee in the month of November at home since 1891. I was just asked because, you know, I imagine you guys, you know, going to have two home games, but this month of November is a crunch time for the SEC. Well, you can see my focus has been on Auburn. Uh, I hadn't even looked that far ahead. All right, Matthew Ray. Uh, Jeremy, last week you talked to us about, you know, needing to be able to drive the ball down the field more and, and create explosive plays. What did you see from your offense in terms of a growth in, in that aspect this week? And then you mentioned Harrison Bailey had a solid week of practice. Where did you see him grow the most this week? Well, just command. Um, you know, it's, it's when you – 
when you are comfortable doing something, um, running an offense, uh, you know, whatever it is, right. You, 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 you have confidence, right. And, and, um, your peers can see it. Uh, you can't fake confidence, you know, it's either natural or it's not. Um, so, uh, and, and that's not to take anything away from him, but the more you do something, the more comfortable you get at it. And, uh, the better you feel and the more confident you are. And I, and you can see that when you just, the, the simplicity of, of, um, communicating the calls, right. All the way across the board, you know? So, uh, it, it, you're, you're talking about a, um, um, a young guy that sitting here, he got to tell, he got to tell Trey Smith, which guy he's, he's supposed to block on this run play right here. You know, the Mike's 42 or whatever, we're working to 42. You know, just some of that, you know, so nothing different than any that you see on any freshman, right? It's no different than Tamarian McDonald uh, making all the calls in the secondary, you know, or or last year, Henry Toa Toa, um, you know, when Daniel Batuli was out, you know, having to, having to be kind of the quarterback of the defense, you know, it's something that you, you, uh, you, the more you do it, the more you gain confidence in and everybody sees it. Last question, Steve Moore. Coach, uh, to Auburn's offense, I'm wondering what you've seen out of their wide receiver core. I know they like to use J.J. as well uh, out of the backfield, but uh, specifically Seth Williams. What have you seen out of his development, Coach? Well, you know, Seth's from Tuscaloosa there, and uh, I was very familiar with him coming out of high school. He's a really, really good athlete, good basketball player. Uh you know, he, he's a guy that's really never covered. Uh, when I say that, you can, you can have him covered, uh, but you can tell that Bo has a lot of confidence in him. He throws the ball to him, um, you know, and he goes and gets it. You know, he can high point the ball. Uh, you know, he's, he creates yards after the catch. Uh, uh, he's, he's a tough out on one-on-one on -on -one coverage, right? Um, and then you throw in the mixture of the other guys they got, um, you know, the, the sports kid is the fastest guy in the country. Uh, you know, I remember in high school going down and watching him run on the track. Just one day I'm watching him and another young man, you know, just practice track during recruiting, and I'm just seeing him run by. I mean, this guy can fly, uh, and he's really developed into a really good football player. So they've got some really nice weapons uh, and, and um, at wide receiver and, and at running back, and they do a nice job finding a way to get these guys the ball. Defensively, Auburn's coming off their best performance against LSU. What kind of development have you seen from Auburn defensively, Coach? Well, just, um, you know, really because my relationship with Coach Steele, um, no different than a lot of teams across the country. Uh, you know, circumstances change every week. You know, obviously they've had some guys in, some guys out. Um, look like that um, that week um, – they had more guys in, uh, probably more that, that, that were healthier. Uh, and then you just talk about if you've got um, a young group of guys, just the consistency, uh, you know, in the circumstances that we're all well aware of. I think it's probably affected a lot of teams. Uh, and I know just talking to Kevin, he's talked about that just between me and him. So they played really well, I thought, against LSU. Um, and I expect them to play really well against us. Thank you very much. We'll have uh, players available tomorrow.